Boys and girls, we're going to start the whale puzzle today. And if you notice, there are two pieces of plywood or two styles of plywood laying here on the table. This is half inch Baltic birch. This is what we'll be tracing the puzzle on and cutting out on the scroll saw. This is quarter inch oak plywood. This is not gonna be cut. If we're out of half inch, do not use this instead of the half inch. This is gonna be the back that we glue it to. So you will not draw on the quarter inch, you will not cut the quarter inch, it's simply gonna be glued on here and I'll show you that in just a minute. You do notice the difference, half inch, quarter inch. This is birch, this is oak. So we're gonna take this right here and lay this down first. Now we're going to need a pencil and I'm going to lay a pencil here. We've lost most of the pencils. There's like four pencils left in the shop. This is the pattern. When you get done with the pattern, I'd like to have you let, leave it lay on the table like this. I don't want you to leave it going to get done just like this. I made this like 18 years ago and I don't want to make another one before I retire. This is my last one. I, I'm lazy, okay, so I don't want to make another one. So please keep it together so we don't lose it. And this fits together like this. And you're going to put it in the center. For example, that's not the center. This would be the center. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's, not, it's got to be fairly close. Now with a pencil, it's nice if you use a sharp pencil. You know how to trace. You trace all the way around the outside first, and then take that wave off, trace the next wave. Am I going too fast? No. I notice I just put them back together so it's organized, so the next child can use it, and I don't have to wonder where my pieces are. And now we got to trace the whale. And let's see how I did. Looks pretty good. That makes sense. That's not too hard for you. And nope. leave that together right there. Here's the pencil. We're going to cut this on the scroll saw. Now, to get this in, this is going to be the frame. We do not want to cut the frame. So we want to use an internal cut. I'm going to use this drill. There's a drill bit laying right here. And you can drill down into one of these holes and leave it hang over the edge and drill. You can put it in a vise and hold it in place. I, you, can, you can drill in any of the four corners. I usually use this corner down here. And there's our hole that we're going to use to insert the scroll saw. Okay, let's go to the scroll saw, please. You can shut that off for just a moment. We've got to put this in right here and watch. You've done this before. You've seen it, but you're going to need to do this yourself. You back this out. That takes the tension off the blade. And when you get it backed out, then it will lay down very easily. Don't lay it down without backing out, otherwise you could snap a little brass attachment there. Open this clamp up, and you've seen this before. Now, this is new. This is called an internal cut. Instead of cutting into the frame, we're going to just slip it in like this. Slide the bit back or the blade back into the clamp. Put it all the way to the top and lock it in. This should stand up easily, and you see it's loose, so then tighten it down. There's your tension. And now we're going to begin cutting. Now, when we cut this, I'm right-handed, so I will, I'm going to have my right hand over here. This is easier for me to cut when my hand is here. Uh, you could cut like this with your left hand. For me, it's more awkward. It's kind of like batting right-handed or batting left-handed. You decide what you want to do. I'm just suggesting you're going to maybe have an easier time if you're right-handed at the big pieces here. We're going to cut around the frame. We don't want to cut through the frame. So there you go. I turn this on. And here we go. I'm going to try to stay on the line. My hand's getting kind of close right here, so I'm going to take this to the back. Now, when you get to the corner, watch this. I stop pushing. This is the big deal right here. I stop pushing and turn. A lot of kids just cut right through. They can't figure that out. And also, notice this. If I come off the line, oh, no. I do not want to back up and recut that. Because now I'm going to have a saw curve in my whale puzzle. You see what I'm saying? Plus, this is waves down here, this is sky. What I should do is this. Just drift gradually back to the line. 
Now you can see there's a pencil mark there and my line's not on the pencil mark. But when I get done cutting, we're gonna take a sander, sand all the pencil marks, and you can't see that I missed the line. It's kinda like taking a math test where you write in whatever number you want and then you erase the answer sheet. And so your numbers are right. Does that make sense? Again, because we, got to, we do want the whale to look like a whale, but the waves in the sky can be flexible. I get kind of close again. I come over here, get my hand back, and make the turn. If I don't turn that, oh no, I'm coming off the line right there. Don't just cut through your frame. Stop pushing and you stop cutting. And you can have me come help you or just figure out yourself. Just stop and turn it. Get right back on that line. That's not, a, that's not messed up. That's not good, but it's, it's fine. Otherwise, I've had some kids go back and try and turn around and come back and get it the second time. It's like missing the driveway or something. <laughs> now I'm backing this out, laying this down, opening it up, and I take this out. Now on the back, you will notice the back is chipped. See all the chip marks right there on the, on the back. Uh, I'm going to point that out to you several times because that's the back of the puzzle. That's going to get glued down. The chips, the chip side is going to get glued down because if you glue the front side down, this is now the front of your puzzle. You're gonna have chips all the way around every piece of your puzzle. So I'm gonna tell you several times, make sure you glue this down so you get the nice edge up. You may hold this. Now, I'm gonna put this back in, put it all the way to the top, clamp it down, tighten this up. And now we're gonna cut the waves. Now you hear you're trying to stay on the line. You push. Stop pushing and turn. Push. Stop pushing and turn. My hand's getting closed. I'm going to move it back here. Try to stay on the lines. Now, right here is one of the biggest problems we have. If you get your hand out of the way right here, you see. When you finish the cut, you've got your hand safely out of the way. But you finish the cut, and you're pushing too hard. And when you break through right here, you go boom. And that's where kids get cut, right there. They got their hands, they think their hands are out of the way, they are, but they're pushing hard, the blade's bending, and they come through, boom! And then we have to start taking kids down to the nurse. So please, this is how you finish the cut. Instead of having your hand here, get it back here, and don't be pushing so hard that you lunge like this. <clears throat> you should just finish the cut just like this. So let it chew through the edge, boom, like that. If the blade is bending like this while you're cutting, slow that, stop pushing so hard. Again, do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is never a good idea there's your cut. You're not going to cut the tips of your fingers. This is where most people are going to get cut. Boom. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to move a little faster here so I don't bore you. Try to stay on the line. Again, if you come off, we're going to get rid of those pencil marks. See my hands right here? I'm not pushing. Watch my finish. Don't worry about the lines. You want to stay close to them or if you stay right on them, but we're going to get rid of those lines. Now the whale. It is kind of important that the whale looks like a whale. Uh, it's a children's puzzle. We don't want to look like a scary monster and the kid's like, I don't want to play with it. I'm scared of the monster. You kind of want your whale to look like a whale. So here we go. Try to stay on this line. Up here, you're going to have a tight corner, so stop pushing. Turn the tight corner. most challenging part. It's like a skateboard trick right here in the mouth. You got to do a 90. Come back with a 180. Ah, and turn back with a 90 to finish the mouth like that. That could be a little challenging for some of the children. Notice the back. It's all chipped out. If you glue that frame upside down, that's what your whale's going to look like. 
you glue it the right way with a chip side down in the frame, there it will buzz off the pencil marks. That is how you cut on the scroll saw. We're gonna move over to the sander quick right over there. Please bring the parts. Uh, see if I can figure this out. There's, it's a very complicated puzzle. There. Now this is upside down, and what we're mainly going after is the little flakes, the little chips on there, because we're gonna glue that frame down. So I'm just gonna turn this upside down like this. We're not gonna get rid of the marks, but I'm getting rid of those little flakes. I'm actually mainly concerned about the back of the frame right now. We're not gonna sand it a long time. We're not trying to get rid of where you, we don't, the, the holes, we're not gonna sand those out. I'm just trying to get rid of all these little flakes so when we glue it down, it's a nice tight fit. We'll do work on the back of the whale some more. I'll show you quick while I've got you here. You see the pencil marks that are left on here? You see all, all my mistakes per se. Right here, I'm gonna take the sander. And we'll do this more later, but I want you to see, see right up there on the top of the sky right there? Does that look bad? It doesn't look, it looks, even this turn over here, it's gonna look fine. Again, you don't wanna mess it up completely, but you do have some flexibility in there. Okay, we're going over here to the glue table, just keep the camera going, come right over here. Now we're going to glue this. A lot of times if I get a chance, I will put an X for you. If I get a chance, I'll put an X on the back. But this is the chip side. You wanna keep focus on this chip side. And this is now gonna be the back of your puzzle. We're gonna glue, put glue on this back side and glue it down onto here. You see this? Would you go get me a wet paper towel, please? Again, you understand the problem. If I glue this down with the chips here, this is now my puzzle. And it's gonna look poor. You're gonna put some glue on this. We don't have to glue this up quite as heavily as uh, we did the uh, lathe project because we're not gonna be putting this on a machine and chipping it with a chisel. But we do want this to stay tight and just kind of smear this around. You don't want a ho whole lot of glue on this because you don't want to have to clean up a big mess on the inside of the frame. And I'll show you this here in just a moment because some of this glue will squeeze out on the inside. You got that wet towel, thank you very much. Here we go. We're gonna put this down just like this. It's gonna be nice if you glue it like even. This would be a problem if you had it like, like this. It'd be nice if we did like this. And all you gotta do is take some pinch clamps like this, pinch one there, or spring clamps. They're located right behind that door, but in a, by, by Monday afternoon, they're gonna be out here on, in lockers laying on the tables. They're all gonna be being used. They won't be back there anymore. And there we go. Just leave that dry. Now, a couple things. It's not even on the outside. Do the best you can. But just like we cut the lathe project on the chop saw to make it even, you remember that? How we, you know, make it, on, when we get ready, I'm gonna take this to the chop saw and dust off all four sides for you so this will be an even edge. What we do wanna be concerned with is the glue on the inside. If there's any glue squeezing out of the inside, don't take your finger, just smear it. Don't take a dry towel. Take a wet towel so it kinda cut, the water kinda cuts it. Uh, but if you leave that glue dry in there, it's going to be hard and crusty. When you come back to put your puzzle piece in, it's going to like stand up because of it. Does that make sense? It's going to be in the way. It's going to interfere. So try to wipe out the glue with a wet towel. Take your time. And if you've only got like two minutes left of class, you probably don't want to start gluing this because then you'll rush off and have a big glue mess. And it's going to be very difficult to fix it after that glue dries. So go around, make sure there's no glue on the inside then you need to write your name on the back. I'm gonna write P3, and we'll use this as our demonstration. But write your name because we're gonna have 120 of these floating around the shop. What's interesting is your puzzle pieces will not fit anybody else's puzzle piece, right? I mean, there's, your, your, your waves are not gonna match anybody, they'll only fit yours. This right here is how it will look, but we don't wanna put it away like that. Do you know why we don't wanna put it away like that? There's gonna be a little bit of glue remaining here possibly, and I've come back this several times and I've had to chip out the pieces because they're glued. Set it in your locker like this. If you put the clamps all scattered different directions, it's gonna take up a lot more room. It's nice if you keep the clamps kinda of going this way. Set your puzzle right there on top with your name on the back and it should be okay. You could write your initials on the back, but again, your puzzle piece is not gonna fit anybody else's. Then we'll put the locker and I'll show you what to do later. Are there any questions? Good luck, have fun, thank you.